Hey YouTube, today I'm starting a series called Radiant Intuition Explained. As a player with no prior tactical FPS experience, I had to spend a lot of my free time trying to understand the mid-round decision-making process of professional level players. I believe that thanks to this, I'm highly capable of breaking down these underlying patterns that our brains are quickly using to make quick mid-round decisions. In this series, I'm going to try and explain these patterns to you to the best of my ability. Keep in mind that all of these patterns are not concepts that are generally consciously thought about. Instead, these are the patterns that get noticed by the subconscious mind of highly skilled players. This subconscious ability, or intuition, is often the reason why many of the best players are incapable of accurately breaking down their thought process. Without further ado, let's introduce our first concept, the chain. The chain is a mental shortcut that can be used to make aggressive assumptions about the positioning of our enemies. Let's take Ascent for example and run a normal team composition. Let's say our defenders have Killjoy, KO, Sova, Omen, and Jet. Generally in a formation like this, Killjoy may look to alarm bot in the pizza area out mid, and perhaps we'll have a sentinel player also jump spotting mid for info to see if the enemy attackers are looking to contest catwalk. With this combination, we'll also have Sova looking to control lane and maybe Jet aggressing into one of the two mains, like this A main or like this B main, to get early information for her team. Usually Omen ends up anchoring A, sometimes throwing a one-way A main, and KO will usually float, maybe try to pair his flash with the Jet, swap with the Sova, not super predictable where he may be playing. Here we can see our chain is formed in this type of fashion. Attackers cannot kill any of the defenders in their backs without information. There's no path that can be taken here that would allow an attacker to sneak behind enemy lines and kill somebody in their back. This is very important. This is the whole idea of the chain. Let's imagine real quick that this alarm bot gets broken, maybe by a Sova shock dart a KO grenade, anything. We are giving up control of market. And you'll notice if this type of thing happens, generally this Killjoy player is going to feel pressured to come this way and post up and make sure she controls market for her team to keep the chain connected. All right, in this round, we're playing Icebox Attack. We've just gotten a pick mid and we're looking to take B. I'm grabbing the orb and our Sova is droning out B. Let's watch. Okay, two here, two here. You want to run A? You want to run A? Hey, hey, let's go. Reset, reset. Wall up, wall up. Reset, reset, reset. Okay. So to your mind, it may look like, okay, you saw 3B, so you're going to go A. However, it's deeper than that. While it is correct that we should go A because we saw 3B, we can also state that nobody is on A, thanks to the chain. Let me explain. We're on Icebox, and let's put ourselves in the defender's shoes. The defenders have positioned their raised mid, who I've killed at the start of the round, and then we spot Chamber, Sova, and finally Reyna on B site. Now, if we visualize their chain, which is connected here, it's safe to assume that the defenders want to keep their chain connected, which means there's only a few locations that the final player can safely be positioned. Where would that be? This is why we can assume A is open. If Viper were playing on A right now, their chain would be broken and there would be an opening in mid. Due to this, we can confidently state that Viper is either Kitchen, Boiler, or Tube, or maybe even Orange. These are the more likely locations for Viper to be playing because we've seen three on B. And if Viper were A, they would have a deconstructed chain. So immediately we go to run A. Here you can see in the timeline, when we've planted the bomb, sure enough, Viper was somewhere in the kitchen area as we've planted after we ran A. If we'd only seen two, we would have had to be more careful about the A player because that could mean that Reyna was boiler and they would have a fully constructed chain here, allowing them to have a player on A safely. And we would have had to clear it. But since we knew there were three on B, we ran with our knives out onto A. I hope that helps. Let's go look at another example from a professional game. Here we see an offensive round from Tens, and we're going to see how he tries to exploit a normal playstyle from the enemy defenders. The enemy team's playing a relatively normal composition on Ascent, 
and it's to be expected that they're going to be playing it as I described earlier. Here we see Tens contest B main and notice that Jet is aggressing it. This generally means that they're not going to be pushing into A main very aggressively. Usually the defenders will only push into one of the two mains. This team looks to take control of mid and they don't see anything close. This is important. This generally means that the enemy team is probably going to have one of those deep players back mid or even on that cap looking to jump spot for info about how the mid play is happening. Tens knows this. Tens updrafts and takes an advantageous angle on the jump spotter where he'll get more time to shoot at them while jump spotting and gets a crazy pick. Now the chain has been broken. It's almost certain that this Jet and this new, new Sova dart means that Jet and Sova are on B side. There's a clear gap in the middle here that's been opened up thanks to this pick and the attackers are going to take advantage of that. There's the Silva on B side, as we expected. Can flash up to your market. He's cheeking flashing. I would do that. Two more. They happen to see Chamber was also B side, so now we know there's only one player A side, and that one player has two options. They're either going to try and rotate out this way, which tends to smoking off, or they have to flank out to try and reconstruct the chain this way. Last one control. Last one control. Have it, have it, have it. No one B, no one B, no one B. Yeah, Tens goes for the aggressive Great fight on the omen and they win the round. If you enjoy the content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and join my official Discord over at discord.gg slash woohoojin. Here you can enter free raffles to win free VOD review live on stream. You can also support me with a premium membership, which unlocks access to private VCT restreams, professional player analysis, shared professional strategy channels, and much more.